good morning and whether you're listening to this uh, live or at a later time. Daryl, I'm, I'm really delighted that uh, you're, you're with myself on the 12th year anniversary of the monthly event. So I didn't know we were going to be back in a room. Uh, I was going to say so soon. I thought it was going to be a little bit longer. Um, look, your, your specialism is finance. And I, I had a look at 2010, that there's been significant changes in terms of social media. Instagram was founded October 2010. Um, and in terms of finance as well, which is your specialism, um, you've been with Shawbrook, Lendwell, and among other players. I think you started at Barclays, if I'm correct. Did. Um, good. Yeah. Um, so how has finance changed and specifically with property investors, stroke developers, stroke landlords? Well, interestingly enough, my anniversary is very similar to your anniversary, Brendan. So I started my career straight after university, which for me was in 2009 at Barclays. And that, at that time, it's easy to forget now, we were pretty much in the middle of a, a, a credit crunch and a very severe recession. And, you know, it was obviously my first recession coming into the world of work. And we've just gone through um, another recession that was linked to the pandemic. But 2009 was very, very different to what it is now. You know, back then, it, was, um, it wasn't all that easy to get property finance. Development finance was still very restricted. The high street banks were still the main source of um, money when you wanted to lend. And even some of the other brands that do buy to let mortgages were owned by those high street banks. Um, there wasn't much appetite to do high loans values. There wasn't actually all that much appetite to do lots of buy to let mortgages. Um, so it was, a, it was a much more difficult time um, to get finance. And then what we've seen since then is a complete transformation of the property finance market. So um, you mentioned, Brendan, that obviously I, I work for Shawbrook, very close to my heart. Um, Shawbrook founded in, in 2011. And they were one of probably a dozen banks that set up around that time, either um, became banks by going through the, a very lengthy sort of authorization process with the FCA or bought old banks, small banks, and then scaled them out. Um, and from those sort of very humble beginnings, as we sort of stand today, Shawbrook has 1,000 employees. I don't know what their balance sheet's at right now, but it'd be pretty enormous. They're doing very considerable lending um, every year and they're supporting lots of different property projects from mortgages on buy to let properties, HMOs, commercial mortgages, um, property development finance, bridging finance for smaller projects, all this sort of stuff, which didn't really exist in the mainstream in 2009. So we've come from a place where it was finance was probably a very close club. Um, you had to have a really good relationship with a high street bank. You probably had to be quite wealthy in the first place. You probably needed quite a big portfolio in the first place to a market where, to be honest, even if you're just starting out, there's tons of options for you to finance property deals and at quite good levels of leverage still. So, um, yeah, I think property finance has absolutely blossomed in the last 12 years. So, Daryl, um, look, it's a Chilbrook Challenger Bank. When do they stop being called a challenger bank? Because you mentioned they've got a thousand employees. Is it is it the number of employees? What classes them as a challenger bank still? Well, Shawbrook and, and indeed their peers, so people like Aldermore Bank, was set up at a similar time. Paragon started to scale quite quickly. They existed before, but started to st scale quite quickly at a similar time. Same could be said of United Trust Bank. They existed much before, but again, started to scale quite quickly at a similar time. One Savings Bank. Um, none of those guys call themselves challenger banks. That was something that the media used as a label to explain who they were. They well, don't e really... Even in the early days of Shawbrook. Yeah, even in the early days, none of them really saw themselves like that. The, it was not. It was never about challenging the high street bank's dominance or trying to replicate the high street banks or in, indeed even become as big as high street bank it was about finding those niches of the market that were no longer served by the high street banks that once were and filling the gap um, and that's what all of those businesses have done in their own different ways and in their own own niches and they've all been super successful to be honest and um, to you know to it to a man really okay so Daryl one thing which we haven't covered in this short video <clears throat> is the growth in fintech as well and i'm sure i'll we'll cover that with one of my speakers at some point because the buzzwords there's lots of buzzwords even bruce from bond finance comes up with new buzzword buzzwords um all, all the time uh but blockchain of course uh, and the impact of fintech and recently the government's involvement in that particular sector it's a sector which i have to admit i don't really understand that well I think it's a sector lots of people don't understand well, um, but that doesn't mean there's not opportunities. Uh, my, my final point to you 
is um, come along on the uh, Thursday evening, 28th of this month, 28th of April. It's the 12th year anniversary. Delighted we've got Jay Howard who will be uh, speaking at the event. I'm delighted that you're going to be uh, co-hosting the event as well. So a massive thanks for taking time out uh, both today and also on the 28th of April. I'm really looking forward to an amazing evening in London. Um, I say it's an amazing evening because there's lots of people who don't normally come who come to the anniversary meet. So Adele, I just want to say massive thanks for taking time out today. Massive thanks also being involved in the summits pre-lockdown, um, pre-2020 uh, lockdown. So uh, massive, massive thanks.